Four miles east of the center, on the banks of the Detroit River, at the city's waterworks plant, some machines are still humming. Even though power plants are beginning to fail across the country. Once you have main power failure, we would switch over to generator power. The diesel fuel powering the generators will last for two more days, and so it's business as usual at the waterworks, even without people. The electronic boards at system control continue to keep track of the half a billion gallons of water filling the city's pipes. But in a life after people, catastrophe looms. There's no one around to turn on a tap. We're pumping water into a system that's not being used. So eventually you're going to max out the capacity of the pipes. Beneath the city center, four-foot diameter pipes dating back to the 19th century are the weakest links in the system. In their lifetime, they've witnessed the birth of the Model T, the rise of the big three motor car producers, and the collapse of manufacturing. But these pipes are finished. Things are going to be completely full and start to burst. Compounding the disaster, much of the city is built on clay. The clay is impervious to the flow of water. So to the extent that there's water saturating the clay, the tendency is for the water to go up. The pressure continues building, pushing up sidewalk and street until the sidewalk and the street buckle. Ten-foot-high fountains turn Detroit streets into thoroughfares for water. 